Chicken Relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. The latest from former unified super featherweight champion Michaela May are now campaigning as a lightweight ahead of her upcoming fight with former champion Christina Lenardi too. She says she wants Katie Taylor. Becoming her mandatory is not out of the question. I don't fault her for that. It's only right that if she's not about to have a rematch with Alicia and she's currently campaigning at lightweight, where Katie Taylor currently reigns as that division's undisputed champion, that's the woman to beat. That's the woman to go after. The caveat is that Katie's spoken for. The caveat is that Katie's supposed to be fighting Amanda Serrano for a second time. Beating two-time WBO champion Christina Lenardo too certainly is a step in that direction. But you have to consider both outcomes. You have to consider both scenarios. What if Amanda Serrano wins? What if Amanda Serrano wins the second fight? There could very well be a third. They could turn this into a trilogy. And then Michaela would have to wait. The way it breaks down, if Katie wins the second fight with Amanda, if Katie wins the rematch, Michaela's gonna have to cross over to Matchroom and DAZN if she wants to fight Katie Taylor. Let's not waste each other's time pretending that Michaela Mayer is in any way, shape, or form on the same level as Katie Taylor. She isn't. You know, the whole A side, B side thing. Your platform versus my platform. Your side of the street, my side of the street. Let's not waste each other's time with all that stuff. If Michaela wants a Katie Taylor fight, she's got to cross over to Matchroom and DAZN. And she's a smart girl. I think she knows that. So if Katie wins, Mich Michaela's got to go to Matchroom and DAZN. If Katie loses and Amanda wins, it is a little bit different because Amanda Serrano, while being a bigger name than Michaela Mayer, she's free to go where she wants. If they can make her an offer that she likes, she can go to ESPN. If the money is right, and rest assured, in that situation, Top Rank would have to pay to play, unless we forget. If Amanda were to win the second fight, there's a strong chance, a strong possibility that there could be a third moving forward. And that's scenario not only would Michaela Mayer possibly have to wait for the third fight to go down but they're gonna have to pay Amanda something substantial to cross over to their platform. Amanda's been making good money, not exclusive to the money that she made from the Katie Taylor fight, what could soon be the Katie Taylor fights. She's been making decent prices, good paydays. And if the people at Top Rank wanted Amanda to cross over to their side of things to give Michaela a shot, it's gonna cost them. That's what the play here is, getting Michaela Mayer the winner of this fight, whether the winner is Katie or Amanda. This is a big part of the reason, at least I I think this, this is, is a big, big part, part of the, of the reason, reason why the why WBO, WBO held, held back. back on recognizing Alicia Baumgartner as the super featherweight division's undisputed champion. How so? Had the WBO recognized Alicia Baumgartner as that division's undisputed champion, that would have enabled her to petition for WBO super champion status, which would have then allowed her to move up in weight as the mandatory challenger for Katie Taylor. Straight away. Think. Terrence Crawford and Jeff Horn. After Terrence became the 140 pound division's undisputed champion, he was able to move up as Jeff Horn's mandatory straight away as a WBO super champion. Think Oleksandr Yusik. After he became the cruiserweight division's undisputed champion, he was able to move up as Anthony Joshua's mandatory challenger by way of the WBO straight away. Think Naoya Inoue. After he just became the bantamweight division's undisputed champion, he was able to move up and wait as Stephen Fulton's mandatory challenger straight away. The WBO recognized those fighters as undisputed champions, thereby enabling them to achieve WBO super champion status. But they didn't recognize the winner of Baumgartner versus Mechaled as undisputed champion. They gave their reasons, they gave their rationale, that they still recognized Hyun Mi Choi as WBA champion, even though the WBA themselves labeled her a champion in recess. In spite of that, the WBO stated they still recognize her as the rightful WBA champion. Thus, they didn't recognize Baumgartner versus Mechaled as an undisputed title fight. And if they don't recognize Alicia as that division's undisputed champion, she may not be eligible for WBO super champion status. And if she's not eligible to be a WBO super champion, she's not eligible to move up in weight as Katie's mandatory straight away. What I think is that the WBO wanted to keep the way clear for someone else to become the mandatory challenger. It's just a theory. It's just what I think. It's just my theory. That's just me bouncing ideas around. But if I had to guess, I'd guess that the WBO is keeping the way clear for someone else to become the mandatory challenger to Katie Taylor. Someone like 
Michaela Mayer. Michaela Mayer, who's with Top Rank. Top Rank, who's always had a way with the WBO. That's the play. It's what I think is going on. And beating a two-time WBO champion helps to inch Michaela Mayer along. Inch her in that direction. The direction of the Taylor versus Serrano winner. That's what I think. It's not a bad play, but it's not a lock either. It's not a guarantee that Michaela will get the winner of that fight. Because if the winner of that fight is Katie Taylor, she may move up and wait and take on Chantel Cameron. See about becoming a two-time undisputed champion. That's if Katie wins. If Amanda wins, well, obviously there could be a third fight, but don't forget that Amanda's an undisputed champion herself at featherweight. She could always move back down. Things are going to get interesting at lightweight in the next few months. In men's heavyweight news, I'm sure most of you have heard by now, per veteran boxing scribe Julius Julianis. PBC va a cortar su relación contractual con Andy Ruiz. ¿Qué pasará a ser agente libre? Por completo. Translation. Andy Ruiz is a free agent. The relationship, as it were, between Andy Ruiz and the PBC seems to have come to an end. And at minimum, what that means is that if that Wilder fight, if that's still going to go down, if that's still going to happen, it don't look like it's going to be under the PBC banner. A couple of days ago, No Smoke Boxing ran a story that seemed to indicate Eddie Hearn planned to make the fight between them in the Middle East. He helped to facilitate it, and the fight could end up being a matchroom show as opposed to a PBC show. Deontay Wilder himself was very recently quoted as saying that he had some meetings out there in the Middle East, potential suitors for the Andy Ruiz Jr. fight. So just because Andy parted ways with the PBC, that doesn't necessarily mean that the Wilder fight is off. It could still happen. At least in theory, it could. And if by some chance it doesn't, Andy Ruiz is a free agent. He's free to go where he wants to go. He can go to Matchroom and DAZN. He could go to Sky Sports and Boxer. He could go to Queensbury and BT. He could even go to Black Prime. He can go to virtually any platform that has the kind of money he's looking for, for the kind of fights that he wants to be in. Obviously, Matchroom has some options for him, but Sky Sports and Boxer, they've got one or two. Frank Warren as well. Top rank. In theory, he could go there as well, though it being that he is a top-ranked castaway, most people may have forgotten that Andy Ruiz, many years ago, he was already a top-ranked fighter. I don't get the sense he wants to go back there, but we'll see. But in a nutshell, Andy's not with the PBC anymore. And I think this accents what I've been talking about here on the channel for some time now, that it's growing more and more difficult for the PBC and Showtime, their only existing broadcast partner, at this point, their only network affiliate. I think this accents how it's growing more and more difficult for them to accommodate all these fighters and their financial demands. Just the other day, Deontay Wilder was seen griping on camera about late payments. And just the other day, the story was that the PBC was unable to facilitate the deal between Deontay and Andy on the premise they couldn't satisfy their financial demands. Yeah, the PBC couldn't, but maybe the Saudis can. And Matchroom, I think if nothing else, what this accents is what I've been telling you all along between declining viewership and a shrinking annual budget at Showtime for boxing, a shrinking annual budget, they're not going to be able to accommodate all of these guys, all of these fighters, and what they want to get paid for a fight. You're noticing that Stefan Fulton, he gets outsourced to Japan. But he knew he fight. Former WBC junior middleweight champion Tony Harrison, he gets outsourced to Australia. For the Tim Zhu fight. Neither the PBC or Showtime are footing the bill for those fights. You know, the fight between Tim and Tony, that's happening as a no-limit promotion. They're the ones footing the bill for that fight, not Al Heyman. The fight between Stefan Fulton and Naoya Inoue, Mr. Akihiko Honda in Japan, he's the one paying for that to happen, not Showtime and not Al Heyman. Those are not PBC shows. And at a time when it's growing more and more difficult to accommodate all of these fighters due to declining viewership and a shrinking annual budget, instability on on the platform, Showtime. You know, all that stuff about Paramount Plus potentially absorbing Showtime. Shedding the excess in the process, trimming the fat. Casting away content that doesn't drum up views for them. Just all of that different stuff we've been talking about and all of that different stuff that's been going on. In that situation, the best thing the PBC can do for them is outsource them. Outsource the fighters. Let them fight on somebody else's show since you can't afford to put one on of your 
own can't accommodate all these guys they're struggling to and i've been saying it for the longest time adrian broner very recently jumped ship he's not with the pbc anymore tony harrison's being outsourced so is stefan fulton and now andy ruiz jr he's severed ties to the pbc at a time when deontay wilder himself is claiming free agency he's claiming that he can go wherever he wants to go if that's the way it is then what that means is that the pbc no longer has a stake in the men's heavyweight division they're pulling out they got no horse in the race they got no price stallion that's what that means they are out of the running in the men's heavyweight division just imagine the optics of wilder versus ruiz potentially landing on a match room or black prime the optics just imagine because essentially what that would mean is that those other outfits are more capable of facilitating the fight between the fighters and satisfying their financial demands more so than the PBC. That's what that would mean. If the PBC were able to get the job done, then these guys wouldn't have left. If they had the money to pay the fighters and give them what they want. Then the fight would have stayed the course and they would have just done the fight right then and there on PBC Island. Wilder versus Ruiz ain't part of the Showtime schedule, not anymore. I mean, for a while, I was waiting for an official announcement as to when exactly that fight was supposed to go down and more and more you saw there's trouble in paradise there's dissension among the ranks in the pbc and it's not the land of milk and honey that some content creators made it out to be declining viewership is why oh for the longest time i've been accused of being a hater and having an agenda for detailing to you guys what declining viewership could mean moving forward that if the numbers don't pick up it's a numbers game you know if you put on a fight on a Saturday night, ideally you want it to do well because you're competing with other platforms for viewership for years now. PBC's numbers have been going down every year. Their regular fights and their box office fights. Their deal with Fox has ended. Fox elected not to renew with them. Declining viewership is why the same might apply to the PBC on Showtime because at minimum, the higher ups at Showtime, they're not going to spend more money on boxing when boxing isn't bringing them big viewership. If anything, that'll make them spend less money on boxing. And if they're spending less money on boxing annually, the annual budget shrinks. Once the annual budget shrinks, you're going to struggle to accommodate all of these Fighters. Get them fight dates. These fighters that are fighting once a year, once a year, if they fight at all. That's where it's at. That's where it is. Unable to facilitate deals with what are supposed to be in-house fighters for in-house fights because you can't satisfy the purse demands. That's where it's at. Detailed this for a long while now and what the consequences could be moving forward. And it seems that that declining viewership and that downward trend has finally reared its ugly head. This may be only the beginning. The beginning of the end. For the PBC. In any event, should Ruiz versus Wilder end up on the matchroom side of things, it all seems to be part of a, a bigger picture. Eddie Hearn has said he wants to do a massive fight on June 3rd in Abu Dhabi and name four possible matches. Wilder versus Ruiz being one among them, Dimitri Bivol versus Artur Betabeef being another, as well as Manny Pacquiao versus Conor Ben. Until all that stuff with the BBBOC and UCAT blows over, Conor's gonna have to fight abroad. Thankfully, Eddie and Matchroom and the people over there in Abu Dhabi, they can accommodate him. He also mentioned a potential Bivol versus Buatsi fight should things not work out with Artur. Bivol versus Callum Smith as well. Callum, who's going to be in action very soon opposite the ring Stippy, and then he is intended to segue straight into an Artur Better B fight as he is Artur's mandatory challenger by way of the WBC though it seems Eddie has a different plan. All of these potential matchups Wilder versus Ruiz being one among them are intended to be part of Matchroom's championship series in this region of the world in Abu Dhabi a joint effort between Eddie Hearn and the investors over there in Abu Dhabi to bring big time boxing to that region of the world in order to promote tourism in the area for that the investors over there that seem to have a lot of money to play they're willing to overpay pay in excess of a fighter or a fight's market value which works out well for the fighters because it's an opportunity for them to make a lot of money it's good for the sport it's good for the sport because it's an added revenue stream there's a waning interest for boxing in the american market but the saving grace and the silver lining is even if one or some networks in america 
aren't pouring as much money into the sport as they used to. Networks like Fox and Showtime that might have had big boxing budgets in previous years but don't anymore. They're just not spending the same money on the sport that they used to. It won't cripple the sport or hinder fights from happening because investors, like the ones in Abu Dhabi, can subsidize those fights. To make them happen. Even if the people at Fox are no longer interested in investing in the sport, and even if Showtime's commitment to some fighters or some fights is waning and wavering, you have investors like the ones in Abu Dhabi that are interested Interested, very much interested in doing big time shows, big time fights, bringing big time boxing to that region of the world. And that keeps the money flowing. You can subsidize any number of these fights. Subsidize them abroad, and we'll still see them here in America on a, a DAZN. So the fans aren't missing anything. They're not missing out, and neither are the fighters. There are financial opportunities over there in that region. These matchups are ambitious matchups. Many of them are quite ambitious. Doing the undisputed title fight between the light heavyweight champions, the only two light heavyweight champions, Dimitri and Artur, potentially putting Conor Ben in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. That's going to be expensive. As would putting on Deontay Wilder and Andy Ruiz, who we all know they want to make a lot of money for their fight. More money than the PBC was willing to pay them. Apparently. Andy Ruiz leaving the PBC, it lends credence to the notion that Matchroom might get the show because at minimum we see won't be the PBC putting it on. Maybe Matchroom will, that's the story. Many of the content creators here in the YTBC are going to have a hell of a hard time explaining why Wilder and Andy had to go to the zone. Eddie Hearn for the money they couldn't get with Al. I thought the zone was broke. I thought Eddie was a slave master. If that's the case, why would they be going to him to get the money that they can't get with Al? What's wrong with Al? What's wrong with Showtime? Can they not accommodate their own fighters so much so that their fighters are jumping ship? These guys boxing on a budget? What is seemingly a very tight budget. I mean, listen, it's the content creators that propagated all those narratives that are going to have the most explaining to do. If that fight, if Wilder versus Ruiz lands on DAZN of all places. The guys telling you that DAZN is broke are going to have some explaining to do. If it ends up on Black Prime, it really is the same deal. They said Black Prime ain't got no money. Their money's not real. We're seeing more and more what's real and what ain't.